Range Control Center at the Wallace Flight Facility. We are currently at T-minus one hour and holding for the launch day of the Air Force Minotaur-1 rocket. The hold is due to a ray condition uh, that we have with one of our tracking sites, downrange tracking site in North Carolina. Uh, we are currently uh, trying to troubleshoot that issue and uh, hopefully we can get this launch off. The window tonight runs until 9.15 p.m. The countdown for the launch vehicle has gone smoothly today. Early in the count, the team was analyzing space weather and an X-ray flux event. That has since been cleared and continues just to be monitored. Launch weather forecast for this evening is extremely favorable with a 100% probability of acceptable weather at launch. The launch of the Minotaur-1 is uh, for the Air Force Operationally Responsive Space Mission, RS-3 mission. Uh, it's also known as an enabler mission in that it will demonstrate and validate launch and range improvements for NASA and the military. Include automatic, automatic trajectory targeting, range safety planning, and flight termination systems. The launch also will be part of the Federal Aviation Administration's or FAA certification process for the Minotaur rocket. The FAA has licensing authority over American commercial rockets. The Minotaur's primary payload is the Space Test Program satellite, STPS-SAT-3, an Air Force Technology Demonstration Mission. Thirteen small CubeSats aboard are being provided through NASA's CubeSat Launch Initiative. Among the CubeSats is NASA's small satellite program, or PhoneSat-2, second-generation smartphone mission. Also included is the first CubeSat built by high school students. With clear skies uh, on the East Coast, the launch will be expected to be highly visible. Uh, depending on the weather conditions and cloud cover at your viewing site, the rocket may be seen from the Florida-Georgia line all the way up to southern Canada and west into Kentucky and Indiana. And that was the launch conductor giving the update to the uh, everyone here at the range and our status of the launch vehicle. As you heard, we are still on a hold. And uh, as we continue to troubleshoot the transmitter problem at uh, one of our downrange tracking sites at Coquina.
launch conductor noted, uh, we would pick up the count no later than 8.15 p.m., which would allow us to launch within our 9.15 window. The rocket we'll be flying on tonight is the Air Force Minotaur-1 vehicle. It consists of four solid rocket stages that are inertially guided. The first two stages consist of reconstituted first and second, second stage Minuteman-2 motors, while the third and fourth stages are commercial Orion motors. This particular ELV, or launch vehicle, will be launching 28 CubeSats, two experiments, and the STP-SAT-3 satellite. This will be the fifth Minotaur-1 launch from Wallops since 2006 from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport Pad 0B. The most recent Minotaur launched from Wallops was on September 6 on a Minotaur 5, which carried NASA's Laddie spacecraft, which is currently orbiting the moon. The launch vehicle will place the satellites in a 500 kilometer circular orbit at 40.5 degree inclination. The um, launch tonight will be carrying several payloads that are developed by university students from across the country. Those schools include the University of Hawaii, the Kentucky Space Consortium, Drexel University, the Naval Postgraduate School, University of New Mexico, University of Alabama Huntsville, Vermont Technical College, St. Louis University, West Point, University of Florida, University of Louisiana Lafayette, and the first high school built satellite coming from Thomas Jefferson High School in Alexandria, Virginia. Students from the various schools are here at Wallops hoping to, uh, to be able to, to see this launch tonight, and uh, so hopefully we can deliver and, and give them a good show. In addition to the university satellites, NASA has two CubeSats that are flying. One is from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center called Firefly uh, with the National Reconnaissance Office. This is a CubeSat experiment to study atmospheric effects of lightning. And then also from the NASA Ames Research Center in California, we'll have the PhoneSat 2, which aims to evaluate the effectiveness of cheap, cheap hardware, uh, off-the-shelf hardware for use in space while increasing capabilities and dramatically lowering the cost of flight hardware. Uh, several tests 
that would need to be conducted with the rain safety office here. Uh, and then uh, hopefully that will go through and we'll be ready to go for uh, continued tonight's count. North Carolina tracking systems there support the flight termination systems, so they are a required asset for tonight's launch. site down at Coquina, North Carolina. The rain safety group here will be doing some confidence checks to make sure that everything is checking out to support the flight systems. And then once they get finished with all their testing, then we'll be able to uh, pick up the count. Right now we're at T-minus one hour and holding. Launch window tonight runs until 9.15 p.m.
This is the Ness Wallace Flight Facility Range Control Center. We are still at T minus one hour and holding for the launch tonight of an Air Force Minotaur One rocket carrying the Air Force Operational Response to Space RS 3 mission. The reason for the hold tonight uh, has been a issue that we have had with a downrange tracking site in Coquina, North Carolina that supports our flight termination system. Uh, the issue, uh, we think, the problem has been found and the folks now are currently uh, doing some testing of that system. And then once that uh, testing is completed, uh, then we can pick up the count at that point. Launch window tonight does run until 9.15, so we do still have plenty of time to, to resolve the, the issue and test and, and get the launch. This will be the third uh, expendable launch vehicle mission this year from Wallops. Um, back in earlier this year, we launched the first Orbital Sciences Antares rocket, which was a test launch of that vehicle. Then in September, we launched a Minotaur 5 launch vehicle carrying the NASA LADEE spacecraft uh, to the moon, and that is currently orbiting the moon and conducting data. Ten days later, we were able to turn around and launch again the Orbital Sciences Antares rocket carrying the Cygnus uh, cargo carrier to the International Space Station. The successful flight of that mission completed NASA's COTS demonstration missions. And after we complete the launch of this Minotaur 1, our next launch, uh, or expendable launch vehicle, which will be our fourth one this year, will be another Antares Cygnus launch, and currently we're looking at December 15th for that mission, and that will also be another nighttime mission.
the launch flare cast here at Wallops continues to hold. It's been a really beautiful day here. Weather forecast at launch is currently 100% probability of acceptable weather. At launch, we're expecting some high scattered clouds. Uh, winds out of the north at approximately 10, 10 knots and uh, 40 degrees temperature. And also we want to note that while the uh, Minotaur 1 vehicle is an Air Force vehicle, it is uh, under contract with Orbital Sciences Corporation to support the, uh, the launch and the development of the Minotaur family.
Wallace Flight Control Center. Continue to count down towards an 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time launch of the Air Force Minotaur 1 rocket for the Air Force Operational Response to Space, RS-3 mission. Countdown checks will be resume at the T-minus 30-minute mark.
all stations to launch conductor on a primary content net. Step number 39, page 38, PCC, power on telemetry transmitter. Telemetry transmitter powered on. Check step 39, VC, enable GPB transmitter power. GPB transmitter power enabled. Copy that. Check step 40. PCC, power on vehicle GN2 cooling. Strike that. We will not turn on PC power powering on the GN2 cooling at this time. Temperatures are low enough. PM on channel six, somebody has a hot yeah. mic. Evaluate transmitter and GPB bus voltage and current. Transmitter bus power nominal. Copy that, PCC. Check G step 42. GPB oh. bus power nominal. Now I copy that, PCC. Check step 42. Link 88. Check step 43. PM verify AOS link 41. AOS link 41. Copy that. Check step 44. FSO acknowledge INS and GPB data valid for TMIG data evaluation. FSO, INS, and GPP data valid for TMIG data evaluation. Copy that, sir. Check step 45. And all stations is the launch conductor on the primary count on that. With a poll for readiness for FTS external power test, all stations report go. VM? VMs go. BLC? BLC go. PCC? PCC go. FTS? FTS go. GSO? GSO go. FSO? FSO go. And PM? PM is go. Copy that. Check step 46. And step number 47. GSO, verify FTS A and B safe. FTS is safe. Check step 47. FSO, bring up CT site with tone 4 on. FSO in work. Copy that, sir.
FSC, FSO, step 48, CT site transmitting, tone 4 on. Copy that, FSO. Check step 48. FTS, apply external power to FTS A and B. FTS, external power on. Check step 49, BLC, evaluate FTA, FTS A and B voltage and current and AGC voltages. Proceeding. Copy that, BLC. FTS external power and AGC is nominal. Copy that, BLC. Check step 50. FSO, verify FTS is nominal. This is the FSO. FTS is nominal. Check step 51. FSO, send arm command for two second duration and continue tone four. Roger. Arm on my mark. Three, two, one. Mark, plus one, plus two. Function removed, tone four continued. Copy that, sir. Check step 52, BLC, verify receiver arm indication. FTS arm indication verified. Check step 53. And all stations were currently complete through step 53, page 39 of the ORS-3 Minotaur-1 final launch checklist, standing by step 54 at T-minus 20 minutes. At 0055 UTC. Range Control Center. We currently continue to count down to an 8.15 p.m. launch. At the T minus 16 minute mark, we will be holding the final launch readiness poll. Coming up on the T minus 22 minute mark in the count. On the primary count on that, step number 54, T minus 20 minutes and counting. BLC, verify T minus 20 minute limit checks are go. Limit checks are go. Copy that, BLC. Check step 54. Step 55, this is the LC verifying the launch time. The launch time will be year 2013, day 324, hour 01, minute 15, second 00, UTC. Check step 55. And G 
PNC, step number 56, report status of upper level wind data. Upper level winds are go. Copy that, sir. Check step 56, standing by step number 15, 57 at T minus 16 minutes in approximately three minutes. Sequence of events after launch, the first stage burns for approximately one minute after launch, and then the second stage ignites. It burns to two minutes and 15 seconds after launch, at which time stage three burns, and then uh, stage three will burn until three minutes, 30 seconds, and stage four ignites at nine minutes. We have the main spacecraft primary deployment is at 12 minutes and 14 seconds, and then the various CubeSats will deploy. At all stations, this is launch conductor on a primary count on that. At this time, we'll begin step number 57, a final launch readiness poll. All stations report go. VM. VM's go. BLC. BLC's go. PCC. PCC go. VC. VC go. FTS. FTS go. Orb TM. Orb TM go. GNC. GNC go. OME. OME is go. CE. CE go. MM. MM go. OMM. OMM go. GSO. GSO is go. FSO. FSO go. RSO. RSO is go. PM. PM is go. Orbital. Orbital is go. ORS. ORS is go. LD. LD go. And TD. TD is go. Copy that. All stations report go. Check step 57. And all stations were currently complete through step 57, standing by step number 58. Copy back on 10.
solutions to launch conductor on the primary countdown. That's step 58. TD, verify the flight hazard area, flight caution area, and impact limit line are clear for launch. Areas are clear. Copy that, sir. Check step 58. Standing by step number 59 at T minus 12 minutes. Launch time set to year 2013, day 324, hour 01, minute 15, second 00, zero UTC. Copy that, VC. Check step 59. VM, confirm flight computer launch time. Flight computer launch time confirmed. Check step 60. VC, verify countdown sequencer's time set to 120 seconds. Countdown sequencer set to 120 seconds. Check step 61. VM, confirm countdown sequencer time. Countdown sequencer time confirmed. Check step 62. Standing by step number 63 at T minus 10 minutes. on that T-minus 10-minute mark. In all stations, it's launch conductor on the primary count on that, step number 63. T-minus 10 minutes and counting. BLC, verify T-minus 10-minute limit checks are go. Limit checks are go. Check step 63, FTS switch FTS A and B internal power on. FTS internal power on on my mark, three, two, one, mark. Check step 64, step 65, FTS switch FTS A and B external power off. FTS external power off. Check step 65, step 66, BLC evaluate FTS A and B current and voltage. Proceeding. FTS internal power nominal. Check step 66. FSO, send arm command for two-second duration and continue tone four. Roger. Arm on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. 
plus one, plus two. Function removed. Tone four continued. Check step 67, BLC verify receiver arm indication. FTS arm indication verified. Check step 68, FTS enable FTLU A and B. FTLU A and B enabled. Check 69, BLC verify FTLU A and B enabled and no command destructs. FTLU A and B enabled, no destructs. Check step 70, GSO verify FTLU A and B enabled and no command destructs. FTLU A and B enabled and no command destructs. Copy that. Check step 71, FTS activate FTS arm enable. FTS arm enabled. Check step 72, FTS arm FTS A and B safe in arms. FTS arm on my mark, three, two, one, mark. Check step 73, BLC verify FTS A and B armed, status zero. Green. FTS armed. Check step 74. All stations were currently complete through step 74, page 43 of the ORS-3, Minotaur 1, final launch checklist, standing by step 75 at T minus 7 minutes. enabled. Check step 81. PCC, arm flight computer with a VC. Arm enable on. Flight computer armed. Arm enable off. Check step 82. VM, verify flight computer armed. Flight computer on. Check step 83. PM, report C-band transponder trackable on internal power. 
And step 85, T minus four minutes and counting. DLC, verify T minus four minute limit checks are go. Limit checks are go. Copy that. Check step 85, PM still standing by. Step 84, VC, place the INS in free inertial navigate mode. Siggy commanded to nav mode. Report on countdown nav. LC, this is PM. The C band transponder is trackable on internal power. Copy that. Check step 84. VC, Siggy was commanded to nav mode. Copy that. Check step 86. VM verify INS in nav mode. INS nav mode. Check step 87. And TD, report range green. Range green. Copy that. Check step 88. And all stations were currently complete through step 88, standing by step 89. We'll accomplish that step at approximately T minus 2 minutes and 30 seconds. DLC and a primary countdown at FTS. Turn NCU electronic power, electronic bus on. Electronic power on. Check step 89. Standing by step 90 at T minus two minutes. T minus two minutes VM verify flight computer auto sequencer started. Auto sequencer started. Check step 90. VLC verify T minus two minute limit checks are go. Limit checks are go. Check 91 PCC activate ordinance arm enable. Arm enable. Check 92 PCC arm booster ordinance. Booster arm. Check 93 PCC arm Orion motor SNAs. Orion's arm. Check step 94. And all stations were currently standing by step 95 at T minus one minute. Minus one minute, orb TM start, NCU Dewey. Dewey started. Check 95. Step 96, FTS, NCU external on. External on. Check 96, VM verify, NCU external power. External go. Check 96, PCC, activate NCU batteries. Batteries activated. Check 98. FTS, NCU external off. External off. Check 99, VM, verify NCU batteries. Batteries go. Check 100. Standing by, steering test. VMs go for launch. Copy that, VM. Check step 101. T minus 10. T minus 5, 4, 3. Two, one, ignition. We have.
Edison and phase two addition. Phase two motor pressure is within addition. Phase two RCU LITC pressures are nominal. Stage two attitude and flight path are as expected. Vehicle avionics and booster power system are within acceptable limits. Vehicle attitude and flight path are nominal. The next expected event is stage three TVC battery activation followed by the stage two separation and stage three ignition in approximately 15 seconds. Three TVC battery activation, battery power looks good. We have confirmed stage two separation and stage three ignition. Stage three motor pressure is expected. Fairing separation recurring approximately eight seconds. Stage three attitude and flight path are as expected. We have confirmed fairing separation, link 88 switching to stage four antenna. We're approximately 25 seconds into the 75 second stage three burn. Thrust vector actuator responses are within predictions. Orbital guidance initiated. Vehicle attitude and performance are nominal. T plus three minutes. We are now entering stage three motor tail off. All systems remain within predictions. The Minotaur One launch vehicle has achieved the required velocity to coast up to a nominal insertion apse of 500 kilometers. The launch vehicle has begun reorienting to the required stage four ignition attitude. The launch vehicle is now 290 miles downrange at an altitude of 150 miles, traveling at a speed of 12,400 miles per hour, or Mach 20. All systems remain nominal. nominal. The flight computer is calculating a stage four ignition time. The Minotaur launch vehicles are reporting nominal status. Vehicle attitude is nominal. The next expected event is stage four TVC battery activation that will occur approximately 11 seconds before the stage three separation. The launch vehicle is currently 40 seconds to the, into the approximate five and a half minute stage three coast period. minutes mission time, stage four ignition is expected to occur in approximately four minutes based on pre-flight predictions. The Mars vehicle system will report in nominal status. Vehicle attitude is nominal. The launch vehicle is currently calculating the optimal stage four ignition time. The launch vehicle has calculated the required time for stage four ignition, which will occur in approximately 200 seconds. Antigua AOS. T plus six minutes mission time, continuing in stage three.
coast. Stage four ignition will occur in approximately 170 seconds. The Minotaur Launch Vehicle Systems are reporting nominal status. The launch vehicle has completed the reorientation maneuver for stage four ignition. Vehicle attitude is nominal. Launch vehicle is now 850 miles downrange at an altitude of 270 miles, traveling at a speed of 11,700 miles per hour. T plus seven minutes mission time, continuing stage three coast. Stage four ignition will occur in approximately 123 seconds. So minute one, Minotaur one launch vehicle systems are looking good. Vehicle attitude is nominal. T plus seven and a half mi minutes mission time. Stage four ignition will occur in approximately 93 seconds. Launch vehicle is currently in its stage three coast, awaiting stage four ignition. T plus eight minutes mission time and counting. The Minotaur one launch vehicle is approaching stage four ignition, which will occur in approximately 60 seconds. The Minotaur 1 launch vehicle systems remain nominal. Vehicle attitude is nominal. Stage 4 TVC battery activation has been initiated. Battery power looks good. We have confirmed Stage 3 separation event. Stage 4 ignition is expected in approximately 11 seconds. We have achieved Stage 4 ignition. Attitude is nominal. The launch vehicle is now 1,400 miles downrange at an altitude of 320 miles, traveling at 12,600 miles per hour. Stage 4 thrust vector actuator responses remain within prediction. Stage 4 tailoff will occur in approximately 15 seconds. We have stage four tail off. All systems remain within predictions. Vehicle attitude is nominal. The required non insertion apps and inclination have been achieved. Wallops LOS. Vehicle is currently holding altitude for spacecraft deployment, which will occur in just over one minute. T 
plus 11 minutes mission time. Spacecraft deployment will occur in approximately 75 seconds. Vehicle attitude is nominal. Plus 11 minutes and 30 seconds. The launch vehicle power remains within predictions. Spacecraft deployment expected to occur in approximately 30 seconds. Dead bands have been tightened in preparation for spacecraft separation. Confirmed spacecraft separation. We have confirmed IPS sequence and initiation. Launch vehicle attitude and rates of payload separation appear nominal. The launch vehicle has initiated the first of two planned contamination and collision avoidance maneuvers. The launch vehicle will continue to perform the planned contamination and collision avoidance maneuvers and then begin reorientation for CubeSat deployment. Reception of telemetry is expected to end in less than one minute with the loss of signal from Antigua. Further live data from launch vehicle will not be available after LOS. Deployments of the QSAT expected to begin in approximately six and a half minutes. LOS. We have loss of signal from Antigua. This concludes the Minotaur post-launch status updates. And that concludes tonight's mission of the Air Force Minotaur 1 launch from Wallops. The launch did occur as at uh, 8.15. PM Eastern Time. The primary satellite did deploy on schedule as planned. And uh, coming up, the next events would be the secondary CubeSat payloads. But since we are out of the acquisition of signal for our downrange Antigua radar, uh, we will not immediately know uh, the status of those deployments. The next launch from Wallops will be the Antares rocket carrying the Cygnus Cargo Carrier for Orbital Sciences Corporation to the International Space Station. That will be a night launch, currently scheduled for December the 15th. Thank you for listening. This is Wallops Flight Facility Range Control Center.